the sea air is so refreshing, it just revitalizes my entire body, but my mind is blocked. I have no thoughts, no ideas, most unusual for me. Usually they fill up my brain and overflow it like a cascading fountain. And tonight, nothing. And still I have the urge to write. Hmm. Something will come soon. These things happen to all men in my profession at one time or another. Writer's block, we call it. No need to panic. It'll pass soon. Hold on. Yes. Aha. An idea is coming. Yes. Yes. Terrible. Bad idea. False alarm. Sorry I disturbed you. <laughs> Not only was it a bad idea, I'd already written it. It turned out awful. This won't last long. It's just temporary. However, it's getting to be an awfully long temporary. Nothing is coming. My nerves are tightening. Oh God, help me. No, I take that back. I mustn't rely on a collaboration with the Almighty. What selfishness. To ask God to take time out to help me come up with an idea for a story. Forgive me, dear Lord. I'll go home and try to sleep. Tomorrow is another day. However, if something should occur to you, I would appreciate it if you could make it known to me. <laughs> Even if it's just a germ of an idea, it doesn't have to be original. I'm very clever at twisting things around. <laughs> Look how desperate I've become, asking the Lord to resort to plagiarism for my petty needs. Home. I must get home into bed before this thing becomes serious. <laughs> you, sir. May I have a word with you, sir? Who's there? I can't see you in the dark. Evening, sir. I was just wondering if you were in the, little, the mood for a little entertainment this evening. Entertainment? I'm sure I don't know what, you what you're talking about. Sure you do. Entertainment. Amusement, so to speak. A little diversion, if you know what I mean. I think I do know what you mean, and I'm not interested. Shame on you, making such a proposal to a gentleman. This is the once in a lifetime offer. You've never seen anything like this before. Not even a little bit curious? Curiosity is the nature of my profession, but I try to keep it morally elevated. Perhaps you're right. This may be a little bit too much for a gentleman of your sensitivities. Wait. Got you that last one, didn't I? I'm just asking, mind you, but what exactly is this entertainment you speak of? Well, sir, how would you like to see a drowned man? <laughs> I beg your pardon? A drowned man. A man with his lungs filled up with salt water and stone dead from drowning. How much would you pay to see that? Pay? Pay to see a drowned man? Are you insane? I wouldn't look at a drowned man if they paid me. What's the point of looking at a man who's drowned? Why would I want to see a drowned man? You're mad. Get out of here. Three rubles! That's all it will cost you. One, to see the man before drowning. Then, and the agonizing after drowning, then the man already drowned. Rest his soul. What are you saying? That the man isn't drowned? That he's still alive and well? Not only alive and well, but dry as a bone and standing right in front of you. I am the drowned man, sir. You? You're going to drown yourself for three rubles? You expect to charge me for your own suicide? I must get away from the food. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. I don't actually drown. I impersonate a drowned man. I jump in, splash around a bit, flail my arms, yell for help, go under, bubble, 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 then come up with my head facing down all puppy-like. It's then to chill up your spine. <laughs> Why do I stand here listening to this? You missed the whole point, sir. This is not some sort of cheap thrill. It's a rich tableau filled with social implications. A drama, not tragic, but I don't often do some of the comic features. What's comic about it? I puff out my cheeks, bulge my eyes, and yell for help in a high, squeaky voice. Sounds like a pig squealing. I'm the only one on the waterfront who can do it. Why would I pay to hear an underwater pig squealer? I just had a very successful season, sir. Sold out in August. Would you like me to book you for the dinner show? What dinner show? I jump in, splash around a bit, and throw you a nice fish. I think the halibuts are running this season, sir. <laughs> Why? 
Why do I stand here listening to this? I wish you'd make up your mind soon, sir. In five minutes, the restaurant throws in its garbage. Then it's messy. I have my pride. To hell with your pride. It doesn't keep you from making a living impersonating a deceased swimmer. I really know how to strike at a man's vulnerable points. That was cruel, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be cruel. You miss all the finer toys of my profession. Have you ever seen a coal miner when he comes home from work? Soot and grime all over his body, in his nose, in his ears, grit in his teeth. It's disgusting! Or a barber when he comes home from work. The cuttings of other people's hair all over his fingers gets his bread in his soup. It's nauseating. Do you even know words are people's fingers? Oh, please. Or a farmer's feet. Every man who works eventually touches something filthy. I, on the other hand, deal with water. It's wet, it's clean, it's purifying. I don't have to take a bath when I've come home from work. I've already had mine. Can you say the same, sir? Do you expect me to discuss my toilet habits with you? My god, you're impurity, and there must be a carriage around here somewhere. Cabby, cabby, you'll regret it! You'll be back one night dying to see a good drowning, and I'll be gone. This is my last week here. Next week, I'm in Yalta. <laughs> There's an officer. If you don't leave me alone, I'll have you arrested for soliciting. Not soliciting. I'm in the maritime entertainment business. Drowning is not maritime entertainment. You're a waterfront lunatic. Officer! Officer! I'm going. I'm going. But I'll tell you one thing. The drowning business is not what it used to be. Can I help you, sir? Oh, yes. There's a strange man over there behind the docks. He's been pestering me all evening. I shouldn't be surprised if you were deranged. A lot of bad characters wander around here at night. You shouldn't be out here alone. What was he pestering you about? Well, I'm warning you. You're going to find this strange, but he wanted to charge me three rubles to watch him drown. Strange? It's out my favorite! It's not worth more than 60 kopecks. Yes, sir, that's all I would see pay to see a good drowning. Officer, you seem to miss the point. There's two brothers over on the next dock over there. For one ruble each, you'll get a double drowning. You see, you have to know how to bargain with these men. <laughs> Officer, it's not a question of price. Three rubles, what a nerve! For three rubles, you can get 14 men to act out an entire shipwreck. And on a good day for 10, you can get a whole navy going down. Yes, sir, 60 kopecks is all I would pay to see a good drowning. Stick to your price and have a nice evening. It's come, it's finally come. The day in the world has gone mad has arrived at last. <laughs> I can see the officer has gone. What did you tell him, sir? Tell him? I told him the truth. That you're mentally unbalanced. Unfortunately, he seemed to be a little more mentally unbalanced than you are. Still, I appreciate not causing me any trouble. And in gratitude, I'm reducing my price to an all-time low of 80 kopecks. 80? 80 kopecks? You could not be saving wretched little thief. I won't pay you any more than 60. 60? 60 <laughs> kopecks for a drowning? Why, it's 40 kopecks for my towels and 40 for the fellow who fishes me out. What's the point? I'd be losing money on it. I might as well stay under. 60 kopecks, take it or leave it. You're a hard man, sir. A hard man. <sighs> pray to God my son doesn't want to be a drowner. 30, 40, 50, 60. Now, where shall I stand? Right on the end of the dock, sir. That's where you see all the action. It's kind of dark back there. Are you sure I'll be able to see well? That's what makes it so eerie. The eerier, the more interesting. All the actions of the last 10 seconds, anyway. Well, here I go. <gasps> oh, wait, I almost forgot. When I come up for the third time, yell at the top of your lungs, Popnashevsky, Popnashevsky. Who's Popnashevsky? He's the man who fishes me out. I can't swim, sir. What? You mean to tell me you're going to drown without knowing how to swim? That's what makes it so exciting. He always waits till the last second to fish me out. Well, Popnashevsky, don't forget the name. He's in that restaurant over there having a drink. Well, here I go. If you like it, tell your friends. I'm drowning! Oh, I'm drowning! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.